Hello again, it's Bob here with another session from the Baselight Learning Program. I hope you can hear me okay because I had a few technical problems with the sound earlier, but I think they're resolved now, so we should be okay. Um, this week I'm going to be covering copy and paste in Baselight. So we'll be looking at uh, the different ways that you can copy and paste uh, different strips in the timeline and also copying and pasting grades between shots in the timeline. Now, as always, if you've got any questions, please type them into the chat as we're going along and I'll come back and answer them at the end. Um, I've got an example scene already set up, so let's get started. Baselight provides many different ways of copying and pasting grades from one shot to another. In this session, we'll be looking at various different methods and when you would use them. Firstly, if you've explored the menus at the top of the screen, then you will have noticed that there's a whole slew of different copy-paste operations. So we'll have a look at these first. They've all got keyboard shortcuts so they can easily be accessed without using the mouse. The first option is copy strips. This has the standard keyboard shortcut, Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and C. It will copy any selected strip or strips in the timeline into the copy buffer. Notice that the strips which are copied all go green for a short while. The duration of the green glow can be adjusted in the preference settings for the timeline. That's in Preferences, Timeline, and you need to change Strip Glow Duration after copy. Note that you actually need to restart the Baselight application in order for this change to take effect. The strips you copy using this function don't have to belong to the same shot or stack. Any arbitrary selection of strips can be copied into the buffer. However, copying strips from different shots will restrict the paste operations you can then apply. As you can see here in the menu, most of the paste operations are now greyed out because I copied strips from different stacks. OK, the second option is Smart Copy Strips. This will copy strips from the stack for the current shot from the input sequence strip down to the currently selected layer. This option ensures that only a valid stack is copied. Note that you've, if you've explicitly selected a non-layer strip, in other words, something like a shape um, or a hue angle, then it will only actually copy the selected strip. So it's probably better to not select anything explicitly and just leave the row cursor at a certain row, uh, sorry, a certain layer, or normally you would leave the row cursor at the bottom of the stack with auto strip select mode enabled. Um, and then when you press the smart scop, um, then when you select smart copy strips, it will copy the entire stack into the buffer. So this case is effectively a copy stack operation. One thing that's worth noting is that if your bottom strip spans multiple stacks, um, for example, uh, here I've got a transform which is covering two shots, um, then the smart copy will actually only copy the, the stack uh, on the first shot. So when you then try and paste that stack, um, it, uh, well, it won't do probably what you expect. OK, so once you've got some strips in the copy buffer, you can now paste them. So let's take a look at the different paste operations. Firstly, there's Paste Stack, which has the shortcut Control or Command V. This option simply pastes the stack you copied into the timeline at the current cursor position. Now, it's only actually available if the contents of the copy buffer are a valid stack. So if you've copied arbitrary strips that come from different stacks, then you don't actually get this paste option. Now, if there are strips already at the point in the timeline where you try and paste, they'll be moved upwards to allow space for the pasted strips to be pasted. 
Um, if you explicitly select a strip by clicking on it, so it's got a yellow glow, when you do the paste, this strip will be replaced by the entire stack that you copied. And that includes the source sequence. Um, so that basically will replace the shot that was in the timeline. And if there weren't enough, uh, if there aren't now enough source frames um, in the new source strip, um, then the end of the shot, when you try playing that, will just show you an X in the image viewer. Now, if there are other strips in the stack you're pasting into, um, they will remain in the stack. Also, if you select multiple strips, then each strip that you've selected will be replaced with the um, entire pasted stack. OK, we'll skip the next option, uh, which is Paste Stacked Group, for now. And we'll have a look at the one after that, which is Smart Paste Stack. And that's Control or Command I. Now, this is similar to the Paste Stack option. So it's only available when the copy buffer contains a valid stack. However, it won't replace the existing source sequence strip. Also, you don't need to explicitly select a strip in the stack that you're pasting into. Um, it will automatically um, use the existing uh, stack at the cur current cursor position. Um, so this allows you to copy the entire grade stack from one shot to another quite easily. Uh, just first of all using smart copy strips, which is control or command U, followed by smart paste stack or control or command I. Now as with the paste stack option, if there are existing strips in the stack that you're pasting into, um, they won't be replaced. Uh, the strips that you're pasting will simply be inserted into the stack below the currently selected strip. So it doesn't replace the grade on the current shot. It'll basically add the strips you've copied, um, add them to the grade for the current shot. Uh, but we're going to be looking at ways to actually replace the whole grade on a shot um, in a minute. Um, also, if you select multiple strips, um, as with the paste stack option, um, It'll get uh, the the paste will apply to um, the, all the strips that you've selected. So this means that you can select multiple ungraded sequence strips and use this as a quick way to um, start off by pasting a specific stack or collection of layers um, onto all of your ungraded shots in the scene in one go. Again, we'll skip the next option, which is Smart Paste Stacked, Stack Grouped. And we'll look at the next one, which is Paste Strips at Cursor. And that's Command or, uh, sorry, Control or Command F. And this simply pastes the contents of the copy buffer at the current cursor position. Um, and that's the time cursor as well as the row cursor. And again, if there are strips in, in the way where you're trying to paste, they will be moved up to avoid anything being overwritten in the timeline. Now, this is the only option which will work with any arbitrary selection of strips in the copy buffer. Um, and what it'll do is it'll paste them at their same relative time and row positions from when they were copied. So one use of this option um, is to make a duplicate of all the source sequences in a timeline. Um, first of all, you would use uh, Select All Stack Tops, uh, which is the menu option here, and then do Copy Strips, so Control or Command C. And then you would move the cursor to either to another row um, further up in this timeline, or alternatively, um, you can actually paste into another scene. So I've got another scene here, which is completely empty at the moment. And if I now paste um, the strips at the cursor using Control or Command F, it's basically pasted all those shots into the new scene. Now you have to be a bit careful when you're pasting strips into an sequence strips into another scene, 
because it can cause unexpected results if the destination scene has a different has different timeline settings to the source scene. Um, for example, if if the frame rate was different. So as I said, you do need to be a bit careful if you're if you're doing this. Now, um, if you want to line up all the strips to the bottom row again, you can use the timeline alignment function, and this can be opened um, using the keyboard shortcut, Windows or Control and semicolon. We're going to look at timeline alignment tools in another session. Um, note that any of the uh, copy-paste options that I've covered can actually be used um, to copy strips between different scenes in the same way. Okay, so what about those options that I skipped over? Um, these are the grouped paste options. Now, make sure that you don't confuse grouped paste with shot grouping. They are actually completely different things in Baselight. So the grouped paste options actually create a clone or a link to the source strips rather than pasting new copies of them. Now, this can be useful if you have a strip, for example, a shape, which you want to use in several different layers in the same stack. Now, shape can only be used as a mat for a single layer. Uh, for example, I've got a layer here where the shape is being used to create um, a square around the clock. Now, if I wanted to use that same shape further down the stack, maybe to add um, another grade effect, but using the same mat, um, then I can copy that shape strip and group paste it using paste stack grouped um, above the layer um, that I want to use that um, shape um, as, a, as another mat. Now I'll also need to enable the use mat for grade button um, on that layer. And I'll just do um, a hue shift uh, on the outside just to show that uh, it is actually using the same mat. And in fact if I now go and adjust, adjust the shape on either layer you can see that it is affecting um, both both the shapes because it is in fact the same shape it's a clone of the same strip now the disadvantage of using grouped paste operations um, so the grouped paste mode um, is that you can't see just by looking at the stack that these are actually the same operator so to avoid getting confused you should change the color and probably add something to the name of the strip uh, to remind you that it is actually um, a, a cloned strip um, now, these grouped options um, were put in quite a long time ago in Baselight, um, and now um, a better technique, if you wanted to do the same thing, sharing a shape between different layers, would actually be to use a, a reference strip. But we'll cover that in another tutorial. Um, so, uh, and the grouped paste option can actually apply to all of the stack paste modes um, uh, that we've got here. Um, but as I said, this, this is probably um, something that you wouldn't use so often um, these days. Okay, so so far we've, we've looked at um, copying, specifically copying strips and collections of strips and pasting them uh, into other places in the timeline. Um, but there, there are also ways of copying and pasting shots in Baselight. So let's have a look at those now. There's basically two different ways to do um, a copy and paste from one shot to another. Um, and the first way is by using drag and drop with the mouse pointer. So if, for example, I want to take the grade from this shot uh, and paste it onto another shot, I simply have to drag upwards on the thumbnail, um, in this case in the cuts view, and then drop it onto the shot that I want to paste it onto. Um, now I can do the same with uh, a shot that's in the gallery. I can just copy the, drag the shot from the grade in the gallery and drop it onto one of the thumbnails in the timeline. Now you'll notice that the entire stack from the source shot is pasted onto the destination shot. Um, but there are ways of um, selecting um, different parts of the shot, uh, different layers for example, um, as I'll explain in a minute. 
Now you can also paste the grade onto multiple shots. Um, first of all, uh, you need to select the shots that you want to paste onto as a group, and then you'd enable the grouped grading mode either by pressing the offset all button on the control panel or by using the keyboard shortcut control or command G. Now when the group shots are all flashing red, uh, when you drag the shot um, and drop it, its grade will be pasted onto all the shots in the group. Now don't forget that the current cursor shot will also get the pasted grade so if you only want to paste the grade onto shots in the group, make sure that the cursor is currently uh, sitting in a shop within a shot within the group. Um, now the copy paste apply options in the edit menu determine how the strips are actually pasted into the stack. And so far what I've done are the paste has applied the strips below the um, existing stack. So it's actually added the grade onto the grade that was already there. But I can change the copy paste apply option to replace um, if I want to actually replace uh, all the existing strips uh, in the destination stack or, or stacks if you're pasting onto multiple shots. Um, and there's also a third option, Merge, which will replace layers which have a matching layer number um, between the source and the destination stacks, but will leave other layer numbers in the destination stack um, unaffected. And you can also choose whether or not you want to only paste primary layers, that's layers which don't include a mat, by, selecting, uh, by setting the Apply Options button here um, to just primaries. Um, note this button also allows you to change the copy paste apply mode without having to select it from the edit menu and there's also a button um, on the blackboard uh, which allows you to, to quickly uh, toggle through the um, different copy paste apply modes as well. Now a variation on the copy paste um, drag method um, is to use the layers view as the source. Um, rather than just a shot thumbnail. Now the layers view can be temporarily popped up from the cuts view by double clicking on the thumbnail. However, it, it disappears as soon as you select something, so it's usually better to open it uh, as a view from the views menu and, and then it's persistent. So you can see the layers view shows you all the layers in the current shot. Now I can drag individual layers um, onto any other shot simply by dragging from the layers view into the cuts view. Now you'll notice that uh, when you're copying individual layers in this way, the pasted layer will be inserted into the stack of the destination shot according to its layer number. So layer two, for example, will be added below an existing layer one. However, if you hold the dragged shot over the thumbnail um, before dropping it um, and don't let go of the mouse, you'll get a pop-up uh, layers view for the destination shot, which then allows you to insert the pasted layer at any point in the stack. Okay, the second way to do copy-paste from one shot to another is to use the DBS or dark blue square and use this in conjunction with the View, Try and Apply buttons. These are three dedicated buttons on the Blackboard and Slate control panels, but they're also available as keyboard shortcuts using the semicolon, uh, forward slash and single quote buttons on the keyboard, uh, which form a kind of triangle on the right hand side. Um, now there's a separate section covering the DBS or dark blue square, um, so uh, please watch the video for that session uh, if you want to learn how to use it in more detail. So a copy and paste using the DBS will copy the grade from the DBS shot, uh, which can be sitting either in the, in the cuts view or in the gallery, um, and it'll copy it from that shot onto the current cursor shot, so in other words the shot where the current cursor is sitting in the timeline. Um, it's effectively the same operation as dragging the grade from the DBS shot 
onto the current cursor shot using the mouse. However, this allows you to do the copy and paste without using the mouse. Um, but using the view, try and apply buttons also have the benefit that um, first of all, you can press the view button and that will show you the shot that you're copying the grade from. So you can just double check where the grade is coming from. Um, but then you can use the uh, try button. Now, when you press the try button, um, that will apply temporarily. It'll apply the uh, shot from the DBS, the source shot, onto the current shot. Um, but it doesn't actually commit the grade. So when I let go of the apply button or the forward slash on the keyboard, uh, sorry, the uh, the try button, um, the grade goes back. The shot goes back to its current grade, and this allows you to quickly try different grades um, on the current shot by simply by moving the DBS to different uh, source shots in the timeline or the cuts view, um, you can try several different grades. Um, then when you actually want to apply the grade, you simply hit the apply button or press the, the quote button um, on the keyboard. Um, again, if you've got a group selection of shots and group mode is enabled, um, then just as with the mouse drag and drop copy, uh, when you press the apply button, the grade will be pasted onto uh, all the shots in the group, uh, plus the current cursor shot. Now you can also use the um, view, try and apply buttons um, to apply uh, separate layers, a little bit like using the layers view with drag and drop with the mouse. But again, you don't have to use the mouse to do this. And you would do that um, by s when you actually uh, press the apply button, you don't just press and let go of it. You press and hold the apply button. And while you're holding it down, you can then press one of the stack manager layer buttons on the blackboard. And it will just paste the layer um, that you select into the destination shot. Now, that only works with the buttons on the blackboard or the slate. It doesn't work with the the keyboard uh, shortcut buttons for view, try and apply. OK, so let's uh, just go back and have another quick look at the copy paste options in the edit menu. Um, now, there's a couple here that I'm, I'm going to cover now. Um, and these are copy parameters and paste parameters. Now, as their name imp implies, um, these allow you to copy all the parameter values for the current operator into the copy buffer. Um, and you'll notice that when I do that, um, using uh, the keyboard shortcut Shift um, and Command C, uh, or on a Linux system, that would be Shift and Control C, the outline of the parameters view flashes yellow, um, indicating that the parameters for this operator have been copied, uh, rather than the strip um, in the stack. Um, now I can paste these parameter values um, onto any other operator of the same type. Um, and I do that either using the menu option here, or I can use the control, uh, the, the keyboard shortcut, uh, which is um, same as the, the normal paste, which is control or command V. And you'll notice that when I do that, the outline of the parameters view for the destination operator flashes in a light blue color, indicating that the parameters have been pasted, so they've been updated in this, in this operator. Um, now, you can only paste the parameters onto an operator of the same type. It wouldn't make sense to, say, copy base grade parameters and then try and paste them onto a film grade. And if you try, um, you'll get an invalid copy data warning message appear at the top of the baselight UI. The parameters can actually be copied and pasted for any type of operator, including those in layer zero, um, such as the sequence parameters. Um, now, of course, if you copy and paste all the sequence parameters um, and paste them onto another shot, then you'll end up in replacing the entire source sequence um, because the parameters you pasted will also include the file name. Uh, so again, you, you do need to be a little bit careful uh, when you're doing this kind of copy and paste operation. 
Okay, as I mentioned earlier, um, the Blackboard and Slate control panels have dedicated copy and paste buttons. Um, we've had a look at the view, try and apply buttons, but there are actually two buttons uh, labeled copy and paste on the control panel. Um, and I've got a, a copy of the relevant pages from the, um, uh, the, the user guide for the Blackboard here. And you'll find them in the top right hand cluster of buttons on the full size Blackboard panel. Um, if you're working on a slate panel, uh, the, the copy paste buttons can be located um, in any of the user button locations, but by default, they sit above the center, uh, center trackball control. Um, and here you can see them in the uh, chalk for slate application. The copy button can be used to copy the parameter values for the current operator by pressing it and releasing it quickly. Again, you'll see the outline of the parameters view flash yellow. A long press of the copy button will copy the stack for the current cursor shot in the timeline. And you'll see the uh, stack uh, glow in the timeline. You'll glow, it'll glow with a green outline. This is the same operation as placing the cursor at the bottom of the stack and doing a copy strips or uh, control or command U. But uh, note that unlike the copy strips option, a long press on the copy button on the blackboard will always copy the entire stack, um, regardless of the currently selected strip within the stack, whereas the copy strips will only copy the stack down to the selected strip. The paste button on the blackboard will paste the current contents of the copy buffer. So only a valid paste operation will be performed. That means that if you've copied an operator, uh, parameters for an operator, then you can only paste them onto an operator of the same kind. If you copy the whole stack, um, either using the copy button or the smart copy strips option, then pasting it using the blackboard or slate paste button will apply the whole stack from the copy buffer onto the current shot. However, it will be pasted according to the copy paste apply options in the menu up here. And this is different from all these uh, different paste options in the menu, uh, which will always add the pasted strips to the timeline, um, ignoring uh, the, the copy paste apply options. So, as you can see, Baselight offers many different ways to copy and paste grades uh, using the keyboard shortcuts, um, drag and drop with the mouse, and the dedicated buttons on the Blackboard and Slate control panels. There are other settings and techniques associated with the copy and pasting grades, um, such as pasting keyframes, um, and also there's a multi-paste function. Um, however, these are all going to be covered in later sessions on copying and pasting. So there are plenty of different ways uh, that you can use to copy and paste in Baselight. And as I mentioned, um, there are other copy and paste related features which we will be covering in other sessions. Um, now, it doesn't look like anybody uh, put any questions in the chat. Um, so that's it for this session. And I'll see you next time. Bye.